I remember someone saying, you start singing, so they will stop DJing. I say, hell no. Right. <laughs> they don't understand why. I say, why would I put all my eggs in one basket and I do music? Music is something that is vast, that is 360. Even if you look now, some of the best producers are DJs. You know why? Because they understand crowd, how to read them, the pulse, when the bass are to drop, when it did. They understand that. Mm -hmm. So they could better chisel how the project won't come along. We could talk about that when I sit on the producer's <laughs> right. But the following year, after I did that song, I went to Barbados. I remember to play at Cave Hill, which is University of the West Indies in Barbados. And when I went, we was playing alongside Monster Peace. So I'm answering the question, yes, you know. Yes. And when we came around Monster Peace, Monster Peace was like, Dougie, <laughs> if you know Peter Coppin, you know, Dougie, you know, I, I, I'm just reading really man and I can just go in the boot. I was like, when you boot? He was like, yeah. I was like, play it. And when I hear it, I was like, oh, shit, this beat bad. Mm -hmm. This beat bad. Why one sing on this radio? And my brother at the time, who is deceased now, look at me and say, sing where your heart telling him. No, I real surgical with lyrics. Yes. And I just get kicks in the studio. Believe it or not, kicks in the studio. Laughter in the studio is good because it is it is generate real great vibes now, boy. So when I go on, I said, put on the mic there. I said, I don't know what I want to say, but let's put it on. And this is took, 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 carnival, bacchanal. And I get kicks in, carnival, eh, eh, baka. I hear the voice of some chinny man say. Tick, tick. That was my first, first line. Mm -hmm. And after that, I come back, listen to it. And the whole song literally just so rap right in front of me. Wow. One time. So that was magic. So I touched a bit of Peter Coppin. The following year, when I had Bonks, remember? Bonks was, I wanna see more flags weaving, weaving. The people, them jumping, jumping. The girls and them moving, moving. The people, them shouting. All of me girls fall in a line. Set up yourself if you could handle the wine and road boy them. Show me a sign. If you're with a girl, you can shake that behind and bounce, bounce and mash up the dance and wave and. All right, you see how I hold in them notes there now because yes. I understand keys. Yes, yes. If you should have seen me die. Here. Right. The yeah. worst. Oh wow. Yeah. The worst because I start to touch and I go in by air. Yeah. But I do understand. Keys. Right. So for me to sing, I don't get accustomed to show me how you just walk up. TikTok, yeah, TikTok. Boom, boom, song, mash up the dance on. I don't know how to control that. Yes, yes. So it was stressing me out. So after a while, I just take a rest that year. See, see that song? That song too hard for me to sing. I don't want to disappoint nobody. Better come off, mm -hmm. which is something that most artists do do. Yes. There's nothing wrong. If you're an artist and you're looking at this, listen to me. There's nothing wrong with taking a break and going back or carving your craft. There's nothing wrong with that. You could take a rest. Listen, Bourgeois and Capleton, and two of them was real bashment people, yes, and then yes, they take a rest yes. for some years and come back different. They, yes. There's nothing wrong with taking a rest. So I took that rest, and I asked around, asked around where I could get vocal training, because I, nobody was telling me. And our partner said, hey, Tambu, you know Tambu? I said, yeah, yeah. Calypso, you know? yeah. Say, yeah. They say, you know, he's a police too, right? And a musician. I was like, yeah. And they was like, go by him. He doesn't vocal training. Man, I called him and I said, Tambu, this is Doggy Slaughter. He was like, Slaughter? Them days, Tambu's changed change his life to a Christian. Eh? Yes. I said, Tambu, I need to learn how to sing, please. Please. Wow. And Tambu took me in. I paid him. He was worth every penny. Because after that, that when I come with, she moving her body to the beat, uh-huh. And she looks sexy, so sexy. She says she loves me so kind. But something disturbed she, and then she ball up, oh, you nice. And if you whine on me like that, then I in paradise. Oh, you nice. Trinidad and Tobago, that is paradise. Carnival, I love you. You wow. see them notes? Yes, yes. You see the notes? Yes. So then I came with that. So that's where Tambu came into play. So you ask about Tambu, you ask about um, Peter Coppin. Who else did I ask about? Ken Holder. Ken Holder. 
Ken Holder was the man who grew me even before I started to dive into music. When I met Ken, mm -hmm. I met Ken with Desha and Ken saw a talent in me and Ken was like, yo, you real bad. You very bad. You need to come here in the studio by Ryan Romani where I work in mm -hmm. and start carving your thing. Yes. And Ken put me on the, the Buster ad. Yeah. A Buster, the soft drink. Yes, yes. And Ken gave me that. And when Ken did that, the rest was history. Oh. That is when I really started to take singing on a next level and started to approach it, not like a chant out and like I started to actually do music. Yes. So Ken That's was very, very instrumental. Thank, very. You, for, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so let's, let's, let's talk about your journey as a producer. We know about like the RR rhythm and the amazing work that you've been doing in a whole other realm. So how did that get started? Um, boy, if I, <laughs> all right, uh, so I'll tell you the truth. I decided to be a producer when I decided to take a rest from music in 2009. Right. I'll tell you why. It was very frustrating going to many producers to record because even though I was developing a great name, I developed some serious bonds with producers because when a producer and artist develop a bond, when it's cohesive, mm -hmm. it's always beautiful. And everyone would see that. So now artists would want to work with that producer. Yeah. You understand? Because yeah. it creates an energy. And people like to, they like to feed off of that energy. Yes. Uh, which is fine. And the producers at the time, when I mean, they were doing straight business. Mm -hmm. so they didn't really have no friendship thing with them. It was like, you know, I like, I, as, as I always say sometimes, I was probably one of the most foolish people I know because I, I see things differently and I believe in vision and loyalty and all these things. But yes. the fact is, in entertainment, it's a very cutthroat business. Uh, and you know that? Yes, yes, yeah. It's a very cutthroat business. And these are things that people don't like to look at, but I love to address the elephant in the room from any angle. Yeah. And um, that's fine. When I mean, it was business. Uh, but, but, but I had now to be waiting too much. I'll go by this one and they say, well, look, this one in studio, you know, you, you, uh, should we do any business or no? You? And it started to frustrate me. And I, went, like, I felt like that was one of the two things that kept my back. Right. The other thing that kept my back was people wanted to, like, we, 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 we met a lot of people in the business who wanted to manage us and book us and, and do bookings for us. And if we, if we wasn't conforming, they was like, yo, black, black Lissy. Wow, yeah. And that, that was the reality, I you know, and I remember saying, saying to the Mosai, I say, Father, I say, take me out of this business. I don't want this business to spit me out like how they spit out at a clan, like how they put Bungie under pressure, like how they did put KMC, the blacklist KMC, bring him back, blacklist him again. I say, I don't want that. <laughs> I prefer step out of everything and come back when it's right. And the Mosai, through prayer and fasting and understanding how, how the father does work because I just put God in me first before anything else. Yes. He guided me and said, listen, when I do this with you, you will see all who really into you, all who loyal to you, all who you help. They will see how much they remember. And I did it and I lost a lot of people because out of sight is out of mind. Yes. So that basically happened. Yeah. But I, I gave thanks for it because I then now, after 2000 to, to 2009, I'm singing consistent hits every year. Yes. You name it, trample up in that feeling nice from carnival time. We don't play soca in my veins, soca in my blood, pokey, pokey. Uh, it's three albums. Yes, yes. Three albums. Yes. Yeah. I, I started to now take up the journey of understanding the world. And what a great time that, I, that the music now I started to go on a different level as a DJ mm -hmm. because before I was on radio and then remember following so I had to come off radio after yes. a while. Yeah. But I started to tour still as a DJ and still tour singing older songs in unfamiliar territories, right. so, which was good for me. Yes, It was good for me. And then my show was a real unique show. Like people would be like, yo, you, you, you Tony Mataron and Lil Rick from Barbados yes. could sing on a show and DJ a show. So yeah. <laughs> well, no, and, and it was it, it was actually something that I, I, I never even looked at mm -hmm. until it was mentioned and I was like wow yes. you know yes so um we did that 
And within understanding the world and touring consecutively, the United States, Canada, England, Europe, Japan, consecutively. Yes. The only places that I've never been to, that I really long to go to, yes. is like Dubai. I've never been to Dubai. I've never been to South Africa. I've never been to, uh, to, to China. I've never been to Australia. Even though I missed two chances for Australia. Yes. Those are places that when I reach them places, I could see, I could see if we say, yeah, right. <laughs> right. You know, and, and, and in traveling, I started to understand different things, different cultures. Yeah. So it allowed me to, to think broader and know exactly how I wanted to position myself when it was that time, because I know that I would come back in. Remember this, right? When the business spit you up, you mm-hmm. can't really come back in. Right. But at, at what was considered, what I would consider, you may also, I don't know, yeah. With Soka in my veins, Soka in my blood, that was like the peak yes. of my career. Day. Yes. That is when I say. Right. Because I didn't think that I could top all of those songs for the rest of years. Think about it. When I don't sing Trample, and I don't sing TikTok, and I don't sing Pokey, and I, different BPMs, different range, different yes. grooves, why yes. come in to really sing that could top them things? Right, right. What? I can't really sing anything else on top that, you know? Mm-hmm. So I would just be there and I'll be there for relevance. They make people say, where are you singing this here, boy? And I say, yeah. And they say, yeah. No, I wasn't on doing seasonal music either. I was doing music. Music. I was doing music. Mm-hmm. So now I wanted to venture in, 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 into other avenues. All right, think back for me. If you watch the video on YouTube, it opened that. You would realize that I had a screwed and chopped version and the soca version. Yes, yes. You remember that? Yes, yes, yes. So we've been experimenting with music. Right. Mm. There was a track that I did, meet DMX, and, and um, Junior Reed. Yes, yeah. We've been experimenting with music before Trini Bad. Mm-hmm. Before Trini Bad and them sisters was wearing gold chain. Go back and watch some of my footage. <laughs> yes. We've been wearing big jewels. Yeah. Before Private Ryan and them started toying, opening up the doors, at any time, tell my talking BS mm-hmm. is I from Trinidad was opening the doors for them. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Align? No, oh, facts. Straight facts. Listen, when I went to Jamaica, them yard men tell me, yo, we don't really like so kind of you. And where you from, from Trinidad, Jamaica, have a whole heap of DJ, you know you. Bumbara Sklat, you're bad. Because I was going with Soka with the aggression. Yeah. As do I juggling dance hall because remember, as a selector playing all. Yes, yes. I had dub plates, I playing dance hall, reggae, hip hop, soca. I was one of the first men in China to have Cardinal official on dub plate from your play. <laughs> big up, Cardi. Yeah. Big up, Cardi. Big up yourself. Yeah. So, 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 so in, in the sound system world, we were stamping and doing regular shows with Radigan, King of these, Black Chinese, Renaissance, Stone of You, name it, David Radigan, all of them. We was on the stage with all of them and still on the stage today. Yes, yes. Just don't talk about it. And what we didn't have back then, because when I mean the journey would allow me to go alone most times or travel with one person. We didn't have no camera team like it. I know. If I had a right. camera team, yeah. <laughs> and an editing team, <laughs> <laughs> madness. Yeah. But it also allowed us to accept that and be humble with it. Yeah. That is why when people see me now and they like like younger generation, they're like, yo, you real bad. Why you don't? I say. That is the secret in the source. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is the secret. Yeah. 